Hey guys, Anthony here, Bibles and Barbells. It's Saturday, October 17th, 2020. In today's video, I just want to talk about a few items that have been on my mind. <clears throat> uh, we see that um, we've got probably the most important election of our time taking place a few short weeks away. And we have um, on display so much corruption. Now, both sides are claiming the other is corrupt. We went four years with constant, endless accusations against the Trump administration of different things, collusion with the Russians, uh, improprieties of his the way he ran his office, um, tax evasion, etc. Um, putting into question at every single turn what the president was doing, never giving him an opportunity to do his job, but always coming after him nonstop. And then on the other side, <clears throat> we knew, many people knew, that um, the previous administration was not scandal free. If you followed it for the eight years that it was in power, you understood just how corrupt uh, that administration was. And Joe Biden is part or was part of that administration. And I think we're seeing some of the fruit from the seeds that were sown during that administration and beyond of coming to fruition. We're seeing that fruit coming to light and we're seeing that corruption bubble up to the surface. Um, so no man-made system or worldly system is perfect. Everyone fails on a different level. Every one of them fails on a different level. The only thing that is perfect is the Word of God, the Word of Yahweh. Okay, and so this week, and for the last couple of weeks, I've been reading the book of Matthew, and uh, I was reading uh, up until uh, verse 24 and 25, where we see uh, prior to that verse, uh, the Olivet Discourse in verse 24, chapter 24, excuse me, of the book of Matthew, we see Jesus in the temple and he's confronting the Pharisees, the teachers of the law, the Sadducees, and they know, they've witnessed his great miracles, his great wisdom, whatever he was doing, uh, his followers, but yet they, they were seeking to uh, go after him and seeking to hold on to their system that they created and they added to, they added to God's word, they, they watered it down, and they put their own um, spin on it, if you will. And they were holding on to that to take them into eternity. And Jesus basically uh, corrects them in parables uh, leading up to verse to chapter 24. And he tells them uh, basically that uh, their, their system is, is corrupt that they're not following what's written. They're adding to it, they're taking away from it, and they're making up their own system. And so he goes in chapter 23 and he gives seven woes against them. And in chapter 24 on the Mount of Olives, his disciples uh, come to him and they ask him about the signs of the ends of the the end of the age, the second coming. When is it going to happen? But in verse twenty-eight, actually, I'll read I'll read twenty-six. But verse twenty-eight is what I want to talk about this morning, briefly. So Jesus says, "So if anyone tells you, there he is, out in the desert." don't go out. He's talking about people saying, there's the Messiah. He's coming. He's over here. He's over there. Here he is in the inner rooms. Do not believe it. Verse 27, he says, 
For as lightning that comes from the east is visible even in the west, so will it be, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. In other words, you won't have to have anyone tell you there he is or go here into the desert or go over here. All the earth will see it simultaneously. His coming will be spectacular. It will be glorious. And so in verse 28, he says this, Wherever there is a carcass, there the vultures will gather. And I, I've read that verse over the years many times. I've never really concentrated on it like I was this week. And I just kind of sat back and I was thinking about it. What, what in the world? Wherever there is a carcass, there the vultures will gather. And I did some uh, digging around and looking into commentaries and um, basically want to say this. Nothing will escape, no moral corruption that we see today, that's quite evident that we see today, on any level, on any side, if you're following politics, it could be Republican, it could be Democrat, it could be Independent, whatever it is, any moral corruption, no no moral corruption will escape the fury and the judgment of Messiah. That's basically what he's saying here. Nothing will escape his blazing eyes that see everything, that know everything. Uh, Nothing will escape. So how then should we live our lives? Whether we're in politics, whether we're in business, whether we're self-employed, retired, whatever it is. How should we, knowing that, nothing, no moral decay, no moral corruption, He will see everything and he knows everything. The carcass where he says, wherever there is a carcass, there are vultures will gather. The carcass pictures, it pictures apostate Judaism, apostate Christianity, and a world system setting up itself against Messiah, against Yahweh, against Father. Um, There are Many in Christendom that are not true believers. I think the Bible is pretty clear about that. If you go back to Matthew chapter 7, towards the end, you'll see that uh, we'll say, Lord, Lord, and he'll say, away from me, you evildoers. He's talking to people that thought they were saved, that thought they were believers. Same thing with apostate Judaism. You reject the Messiah who's already come, and are looking for another Messiah, you've, you're, you are apostate. And then the world system we can see, it's quite obvious, the world system is set itself up against Messiah's system. Okay, it's against the kingdom. It's anti-kingdom. It's anti-Messiah. And there is someone now waiting in the wings to come forward at the right time to show that He's the Messiah, or He is the one that you are waiting for. And friends, that is the Antichrist. Okay? So the carcass pictures apostate Judaism, Christendom, and the whole world system that sets itself up against, uh, against Yahweh and His Messiah, His Bane, His Son. The eagles and vultures in the in the passage, in verse 28, there the vultures will gather. Um, typify Eagles and vultures typify judgments of God that will be unleashed in connection with the Messiah's appearing. When Messiah comes the second time, he's not coming as a lamb, a gentle lamb. He's coming as a lion. And so this verse should terrify should terrify people that are reading it. And it should give you a healthy fear of God, not fear that, oh, he's going to step on me on every corner, every turn that I make, but knowing that you, the reverence for him, the the majesty of him, um, knowing everything, creating everything, being self-existent, being all-knowing, all-loving, it should give us a reverent fear of 
Yahweh and his Messiah. So, in closing, wherever there is a carcass, there the vultures will gather. We are seeing and witnessing right now in this country a system sown on man, built on man's, it's like a tower of Babel, built with stones, with cement, with things gathered that we are doing as a, as a, as a nation, as a world system. And we're not relying on the one who built the universe. We're not, we're simply not relying on it. We're looking for an answer, an earthly answer to our eternal damage that we suffer. And that's sin, that's estrangement from Yahweh because of our moral decay and our moral corruption. We, as believers, need to be shouting this from the rooftops. Do not align yourself with these world systems that are coming because you will be disappointed. Align yourself with Messiah's kingdom, what he says is coming, and no matter what, don't drift to the left or to the right. Stay on the plumb line because that is the way he's telling us in He's giving us the signs of the ends of, end of the age in, in Matthew chapter 24 and 25. We simply need to be obedient and to be looking for that kingdom. Okay? Those of you that maybe think you are a believer, you think you're saved, go back to the Word. Go back to the Word and see what it says. Jesus says you must be born again. You must be born of the Spirit, not this, not just this mental ascent that oh yeah I believe in I I believe about Jesus about Messiah. No, your faith and trust have to be in Him to save you. He's in effect your parachute. You're falling into a pit. You're falling into the abyss. The only thing that can save you is Him. He could rescue you from your sin, but you have to put it upon Him and use Him and cling to Him. So if, you're, if you are one of those people that just have this mental ascent that, oh yeah, I, I was brought up that way, I went to church, uh, I know about Jesus, you could be one of the ones in Matthew chapter 7 that he talks to. Um, and you don't want to be that. It's the most frightening verse in the Bible. Um, and then those today that may be watching that are aligning with the beast system and are embracing it, Maybe you've been fooled. Maybe you've been, um, you've grown up um, in a non, uh, you know, grown up thinking that everything just came out of nowhere and things just happened and everything just appeared and the world's going to go on in, in perpetuity. Um, you need to really sit and think about your eternal state and what it's going to be and think about what you're embracing now and the lasting effect it's going to have in eternity do not embrace this b system the system at times may look very appealing very attractive but it's godless it's man-centered and man-focused and it's godless don't fall for it. Cling to Messiah, cling to His Word, cling to His commandments right here. Cling to them, follow them. Be a disciple. That's all I have to say this morning. This system that we have in this country is broken. It's man-centered. It's not centered on the truth. It's peppered with some truth, but it lacks power because it denies both Yahweh and his, his bane, his son, Yeshua, Jesus Christ. So that's what I have to say today. Let me know what you think. Let me know where you perhaps are today in your walk. Maybe you don't have a walk. Maybe you're just, like I spoke about a few minutes ago, somebody that's just 
constantly drifting along and going through life, going through 50, 60, 70, 80 years, and then you think there's going to be nothing at the end of that, the end of that life. Well, there is. The Bible tells us there is. There's an everlasting life without Yahweh or with Yahweh. And the only way to get there is through his son, whom he sent to save you and me from our sin. Who rose from the dead to prove who he was and to show that he has the power to save. And it's eternal. Eternal power, eternal strength, stronger than any, mightier than any man-made system can be, regardless of what the one coming is going to promise you. Messiah is infinitely more powerful than the one, this earthly leader who is getting ready to take the world stage. Thank you for joining me. Take care. God bless. Anthony, signing off.